Hi, my name is Akina Lubade, and I'm a program manager on the Teams platform. Today we're going to cover a topic that's central to building apps on Teams, and that's the app package. Here are the topics we'll cover today. First, we'll go over at a high level what capabilities Teams apps may have. Next, we'll cover the app package and what it, what's in it. And then we'll go on to cover the Teams app schema, which helps define a valid app package. And after that, we'll also walk through an example app package. Last, we'll cover how to create a package through a tool called App Studio and how to submit your app when you're finished. First, let's cover at a high level what a Teams app is and what it consists of. A Teams app consists of one or more capabilities. These capabilities help define what is in an app and how that app works within Teams. First, let's go over tabs. Tabs in Microsoft Teams allow you to display rich interactive web content. You can build a Microsoft Teams tab from scratch, or you can adapt to your existing web app experience. After that, we have bots. Bots can interact with Microsoft Teams users naturally through chat or provide a simple command-based bot to be used as your command line interface for your broader Teams app experience. Connectors are a great way to push your app's rich content into Microsoft Teams. Any user can connect a team to a service and get notified of the Teams activity in that service. After that, we have messaging extensions. Messaging extensions allow users to query or post information to and from your service and post that information in the form of cards right into a message. And lastly, we have the activity feed integrations. The activity feed in Microsoft Teams is a user's single inbox for all activity across Teams. Activity feed integrations allow you to push activity from your service into this feed. An app functionality is split into two main sections. There's the apps functionality and business logic that is hosted in the developer's web service. And then there's the definition of the app that is contained in the app package, which we'll go over today. The app package describes two teams how to find and display the app's functionality. So what's in the app package? The app package consists of three things. The app manifest, which we'll go into more detail in later in this presentation, and then two icons. The first icon is a full color icon, and that needs to be 196 by 196 pixels. That is the primary icon that's used within the Teams client to personalize the user's experience with your app. The outline icon is used in other places in the client and should be 32 by 32 pixels. The package is a flat zip file that contains these three components. That means there should be no folders contained within the zip. The schema that the app manifest should conform to is defined and hosted on our public Git repository. Now let's go and walk through an example app package, app manifest, and look at the team schema. As you can see here, the app package is pretty straightforward. There is no folders included in the zip file that we're in. It is just a color icon, an outline icon, and the manifest. Now let's take a look at the schema that defines what a valid app package looks like. The Microsoft Teams schema is hosted here on GitHub. A new version is released from time to time, and this defines what a valid app package could look like. Here we have an example manifest that is describing a fake app, but it does a good job at explaining what an app package is formed like. The first two fields, the schema and the manifest version, describe the version of the schema that this manifest adheres to. Next, we have the app version. This is the version of the specific app. If you update something in your manifest, you should increment the version as well. This way, when the new manifest is installed, it will overwrite the existing one, and the user will get the new functionality. Next, we have an ID, unique identifier for this app. If you have registered a bot via Microsoft Bot Framework, or your tab's web app is already signs in with Microsoft, you should already have an ID and should enter it here. Otherwise, please enter a GUID. Next, we have the package name, and this is just a unique identifier for the app in reverse domain notation. For example, com.example.myapp. The next field we have here is developer. This field just specifies some information about your company, and for apps submitted to App Source, these values much match the information that you have in your app source entry. Next, we have name. This is actually just the app name. 
This is displayed to users in the team's experience. For apps submitted through AppSource, these values much also match the AppSource entry. The values of the short and full name should not be the same thing. Next, we have a description. This just describes your app to users. Try to make sure that your app description accurately describes the experience and provides information to help potential customers understand what your app experience does. Now we have the accent color. This is a color to use in conjunction with and is a background for your outline icons. This must be a valid HTML color code. Now we can jump into some of the capabilities that apps can expose. First, we have configurable tabs. These tabs are used when your app experience has a team channel tab experience that requires extra configuration before it's added. You should note that this is currently only allowed in the team scope. Next, we have static tabs. These are essentially personal tabs. These define a set of tabs that can be pinned by default in the personal app experience without the user adding them manually. Static tabs, as of today, only support the personal scope. Now we have bots. This just defines a bot solution, along with optional information such as any commands the bot supports and things like the ID and whether the bot is a notification-only bot. You can also describe things such as whether or not the bot requires a channel selector. This portion simply tells us the ID of an O365 connector that is part of your app. Now let's move into Compose Extensions. The first thing we want to note here is that the name of the feature was changed from Compose Extensions to Messaging Extensions in 2017. However, the name of the schema for this feature has remained the same. So we still call it a Compose Extension. Here, you can add things like commands to your Compose Extensions and parameters for each of those commands. The last thing we have here is permissions. This just tells us what kind of permissions your bot requires. After that, we have valid domains. This tells the client what are the valid set of domains that we should expect your app to load. Now let's describe another way to describe an app package, which is through App Studio. App Studio is a Teams app which was created to simplify the process of creating productive and robust apps. App Studio streamlines the creation of the manifest for your app and provides some useful tools like the current editor and React control library. Writing and hosting the code is still up to you. App Studio is built on the Teams platform and can be installed from the Teams app store. App Studio is composed of four main portions. The portion that we'll be focusing on the most today is the manifest editor. It also has things like the card editor, control library, and a bot to help you with building your app. Now let's dive into how you can use App Studio to create your app package. Once you open up App Studio, navigate to the manifest editor. Once you're here, you can see the set of apps that you've been working on. I'm going to click into Contoso Studio example app. As you see, there's a good mapping between what we went over in the manifest and what is here in App Studio. You can provide things like your short name, your long name, and you can also just generate a GUID from within App Studio. You can also enter the descriptions for your app, enter the developer information, such as the name of the developer, the website, and URLs for privacy statements and your terms of use. You can also provide branding for your app, such as the full color icon, the transparent outline icon, and the accent color. Once you're done describing your app details, you can go in and start describing the capabilities of your app. Here, you can see that we already have a team app described and some configuration about the team app. If we would like, we could also add a personal tab. Once we add things like the name, the ID, and the URLs for the personal tab, you can click Save, and it would exist right here. Now let's go over to bots. We've done a lot of work to streamline the bot creation process for Teams apps. What used to be a multi-step process of going to the AD portal, registering an app and getting an app ID, taking the app ID to a bot framework and registering with bot framework with that ID is now a simple click. You register, describe the name of your bot, add some configurations such as the scope, and whether your bot uses things like downloading files, 
or if it's a notification only bot, you simply click, click create a bot. And we, under the hood, we do all that registration on your behalf. Once that registration is finished, you'll be able to do things like generate a new password for your AAD app and also set the messaging endpoint for your bot. You can also add commands for your bot and describe the scope for which they exist. You can see that since I only set that command to exist in the personal scope, when I click over here, there are no team scopes. If I wanted to select an existing bot, I could do that as well. I could either manually enter the app ID or choose from one of the existing bots that I have. Now, let's move over to connectors. We have the option of setting up an existing connector. In this case, we just simply name the connector, provide the ID for the connector, and then optionally enter any configuration URL that's necessary. If we wanted to go and register a new connector, clicking here would pop us out to the O365 connector portal where we can go through the registration process. Now let's move over to messaging extensions. Here we can see our app doesn't currently have a messaging extension, so we'll click here to set one up. Just like bots, we can either register a new messaging extension or choose from an existing one. Under the hood, messaging extensions are powered by bots, and so it requires the same bot registration process as a bot does. Here, we'll type in an example messaging extension and click Create. Now we're going through the same AD app registration process and bot framework registration process as we did before. Once that's finished, we can optionally generate an AD app password. We can also set the messaging extension endpoints for the bot. And we can also add commands and parameters for the commands for the messaging extension. That's a quick summation of the capabilities we can add through AppStudio. Let's go through how we finish. This section is the valid domains. What AppStudio does is look at your app details, your tabs, your bots, and your messaging extensions for URLs that you've already added to your app. We then automatically generate a set of valid domains, but you can also add any additional valid domains yourself. Lastly, let's look at how we can test and distribute our app. The first thing we see here is install. This allows you to install the app to a team of your choosing. Next, we have download, and this downloads the app package to your hard drive. You can then choose to distribute it within your team or upload it to the team's client. Last, we have submit, and this link will pop you out to the seller dashboard where you can go and submit your app to the store for approval. Now that we've gone through how to create an app package, let's go through how to submit that app package to the store. Apps that are intended to be submitted to the Teams App Store are submitted through the seller dashboard. This requires you to register a Microsoft developer account and choose the Office program. There's a few day waiting period from registering to approval, so make sure you do this before you intend to submit your app. Once your app is approved, your app will show up in the Teams App Store and App Stores. Now let's walk through a few key takeaways. The Teams App package is a zip file which contains the manifest. This is the primary way that describes how your app interacts with the Teams client. You can manually craft a manifest or you can use App Studio. App Studio makes creating an app package a lot easier by consolidating a lot of the registration process and also alleviating yourself of the need to manually craft an app package. The Teams app schema is hosted on GitHub and can be referred to anytime, and it's also revved as we add capabilities to our platform. Once you're done creating your app package, you can submit your app package to the seller dashboard and it'll show up in the Teams app store once it has been approved. Thanks for taking the time to watch this talk and I hope you walk away with the knowledge you need to create a Teams app package.